In this video, we are making the ribbed crochet soap sack. This is a super fast and easy project that is great to make between large projects, such as if you just finished a blanket or shawls or anything that took you a while to finish. Having that quick win project feels so good. And this is also a great way for you to use up any 100% cotton yarn that you have laying around that you're not sure what to do with. Make a soap sack. The pattern for the ribbed crochet soap sack was actually created by Crocheting Crafts. I'll have the link in the description section below that'll take you straight to the pattern. While you're there, check out all of their other amazing patterns that they have on their website. It's a lot of fun to check out their creativity. Now, when it comes to the materials that I used to make the ribbed soap sack, it's super easy peasy. We're just dealing with 100% cotton yarn, so grab that Lily Sugar and Cream or that Peaches and Cream or really any yarn that's just 100% cotton. Then I am, oh, this is a size four weight yarn, by the way. So I know that there are other 100% cotton yarns that are three weight yarn, two weight yarn. This is a four weight yarn. Crochet hook size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook a pair of scissors, and a yarn needle or tapestry needle to weave in your ends at the end of the project. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna begin by chaining seven. Leave a long enough tail for you to weave in the ends at the end of the project. One, two, three, seven. Perfect. We're going to start working in rounds. So for round one, we're going to make two half double crochet stitches in the second chain from our crochet hook. One, two, and then make two half double crochet stitches in the next four stitch spaces. One, two, three, four. So next stitch space one, same stitch space, two, seven, eight, great. So you should have a total of 10 half double crochet stitches created so far. In that last chain, we're gonna make four half double crochet stitches. After two, I'll move the tail <laughs> and make the other two on this other side. Same stitch space, there we go. Three and four. Now we're gonna start working on the other side of those stitches. So if you look at the stitches, you'll see the one loop that we can actually start working off of. You're going to make two half double crochet stitches in the next five stitch spaces. So you should have a total of 10 half double crochet stitches by the end here. Nine and 10, fabulous. So you'll have eight stitches in the middle on the side, eight stitches in the middle on the side, so that's a total of 16. Four on this corner, four on that, that corner. So that should be a total of 24 stitches all the way around. Then we're gonna go ahead and slip stitch into that first stitch space. Where is it? There it is. Slip stitch to close the round. And this is what we should be looking at. Right, like, right about there. All right, let's go ahead and start working round two. For round two, we will begin by chaining one. Great. For round two, we will make one back post half double crochet stitch around each stitch space all the way around. What that means is that we will have 24 back post to half double crochet stitches for round two. We will begin by yarning over, finding that same stitch we just slip stitched into. There we go. Taking your crochet hook behind the stitch and coming between that stitch and the chain two that we started with. Push that stitch back go between that stitch and the next stitch over. So you are actually working that crochet hook between the stitch posts and not on the V stitches. We're not touching the V stitches here. Yarn over, pull that yarn all the way through. Three loops on my crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. Back post, half double crochet. Let's do that again. Yarn over, insert our crochet hook, 
in the side of that next stitch, push that stitch back, go through the other side, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops, and repeat. We're going to do this a total of 24 times. Keep count here. This is gonna be super important. Once we get further in the project, you can try to go without counting. For right now, definitely count. So I have one, two, 24, great. Okay, if you had any trouble at all working those back post half double crochet stitches, I will put a link in the description section below for you where I am slowly demonstrating how to do a back post stitch. And I'm hoping that you watching that video will help you to identify where to put your crochet hook in the process of making a back post crochet stitch. All right, slip stitch into the top of that first back post half double crochet. And slip stitch and this is what we're looking at so it almost looks like a bit of a basket you kind of have this foot created here okay moving on to round three so for round three we start by chaining one round three all we're doing is making one half double crochet stitch just a regular half double crochet stitch in each stitch space all the way around so we will end round three with a total of 24 half double crochet stitches keep count 24, slip stitch into the top of that first half double crochet stitch to close round three. Great. So for round four through the end of round 13, we are repeating round two and round three. So round two is the half double crochet back post stitches and round three is just the regular half double crochet stitches. So what I'm gonna do with round four, round four will be back post stitches, round five, regular half double crochet. Round six will be back post stitches. Round seven will be regular half double crochet. So just keep in mind the even number rows will be the back post half double crochet stitches. The odd number rows will be the regular half double crochet stitches. We're going to keep the same count in every single row. Every single row will have a total of 24 stitches in each row or in each round. Okay, so make sure you count periodically to make sure you're staying on track. It is very easy with this crochet pattern to add a stitch. I've done that before in my demo and I was like, oh, I should make a point to say that. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let you go and I'll meet back up with you at the end of round 13 to show you how they do the next step in the soap sack. Finishing up round 13 here. Oh my gosh, I love, love, love all the texture of these ribbed stitches. It looks awesome. Okay, so for round 14, we're actually going to start creating the middle section where we will add the string, the drawstring that will go among the bag. So we're gonna start by chaining one, single crochet into the same stitch we just slip stitched into. Oop. Single crochet and then chain two, skip two, single crochet. Chain two, skip two, single crochet. That's the repeat pattern all the way around for round 14. Chain two, skip two, single crochet. At the very end of round 14, skip two, we're actually going to slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet stitch to close round 14. So we will still have the chain two, but then slip stitch to close round 14. Last round, round 15, we're gonna start by chaining one, single crochet into the same stitch we just slip stitched into. Beautiful. Skip over to the next single crochet stitch here and make nine treble crochet stitches in that stitch space. We will be creating this very large fan shape. So yarn over once, yarn over twice, insert crochet hook, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There's one. Two eight, and one more, nine, move over to the next single crochet stitch and single crochet. And that is going to be the repeat pattern for round 15. 
We're gonna next do nine treble crochets in that single crochet stitch and then single crochet. Nine treble crochets, then single crochet. Repeat all the way around. I'll meet you at the end of round 15 to show you how we will close off round 15, close off the bag, and what we're gonna make next. Nine, and then at the very end of round 15, just slip stitch into the top of that very first single crochet stitch to close the round. Grab your scissors, cut a long enough tail for you to weave in the end, yarn over, pull through the loop on your crochet hook for a tie off. Great. The next thing that we need to make is the drawstring to go around the bag. This part is super, super important for your bag so that way you can hang the bag somewhere and it doesn't just need a place to rest. We can actually hang it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're literally gonna chain 70 chains. So go ahead and take care of that. Chain 70, but don't cut anything off. Don't do anything extra. Wait for me there as soon as you're done with all 70 chains. 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. Great. Put your crochet hook down. Grab the other end of your chain. Grab your soap sack. Find that chain two section here in the bag. Doesn't matter where, I'm literally gonna find where my tail stops so I know where I actually began and ended each round. I'm gonna take my chain and insert it into that chain two space right below the fan. And I'm gonna weave it in and out, in and out, in and out of all of those chain twos right below the fan. Okay, I've made it all the way around. Right here, so this is the entrance of this chain two. Next one over, that's where I'm coming out. Okay, so if you're a perfectionist, this part is going to be very tedious for you, but if you would like, you can make sure that your rope or your chain is all facing the exact same direction. Honestly, I don't think it matters. I think no matter what, this chain is gonna get twisted some way, shape, or form within the bag. So I'm not going to fuss with it, but how we're going to close this off is we're gonna take our crochet hook, make sure that our tension here is back to normal if you may have extended the chain a little bit. Find the very first chain that you made and slip stitch into that chain to make a big giant ring that is now going to be your drawstring that will hang wherever you need it to hang. Okay, so grab your scissors, cut a long enough tail to weave in your ends, yarn over that tail, pull the tail through the loop on your crochet hook, and next that thing you'll have to do, guys, is just grab that yarn needle, tapestry needle, weave in your ends, so we've got one, two, three, and if you really want to, on the inside bottom of your soap sack, is the tail from when we started, and that would be four. So, four tails to weave in, and then your soap sack is done. I really love this textured soap sack so much. The ribs on here would make for a great exfoliator. I really do hope that you give it a try. You might surprise yourself. You might love it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you at the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>